Okay, a video of no defined subject, I don't think. It's probably just kind of a follow-up to the whole conversation about life and its meaning. Um, but I don't know if I'll throw it in as an official video. Anyway, it's a, you know, just this whole perception thing. You know, that we have these different perceptions and it's made out of some sort of different knowledge base, some different life experience, different little bits of information that one person has, the other person doesn't have, vice versa. So there's these people who are almost mockingly, you know, they exist like, oh, somehow it's just completely anti-intellectual to be reductionistic about our existence, to do this biology thing, this chemistry thing, this physics thing, and to recognize that, yes, this doesn't have any you know, brilliant idea here. It's like even Pyro's video was talking about um, some sort of natural culling, I, I didn't watch the whole thing yet, of um, the environment to gain their meat, that somehow you've legitimized it if you've gone out and you've actually stomped on it yourself and, and beat the life out of it. Um, and it's just such a, it's a, you know, to me that's laughable. That, that you would that, and, that, and that you would talk about well its function in the world or there's some sort of use in creating something that will control its population and kill it and you know I mean we could make the same arguments about human beings that they, we should increase infant mortality again you know to control human population like why don't we just you know give people parasitic diseases on purpose because they, they serve some sort of natural function and it's just laughable um, this reverence for um, this. I mean, like I said, it's pretty. It's, it's very pretty, attractive, but that's all. It's aesthetics. It doesn't, it doesn't have, you know, the substance of it is consumption and reproduction. It's DNA selfishly um, attempting to, to creep over every surface it can to capitalize. There's, there's nothing high-minded about it. So anyway, um, yeah, I mean, what I really wanted to get to, though, is more um, obscure kind of perception thoughts. Just this whole idea of what people think. You know, when they think about life, they obviously, they have puffy the word. They've made it soft and friendly and um, beautiful. All the, all the, the little adjectives they live by, um, all the attractive, desirous um, qualities. Um, but yeah, what if the, the universe vacant of it? It's like you could just go through all of human history and you could say, well, there's no people living on Easter Island again. Is the universe diminished? Is there a part of the universe screaming somewhere because there's no people and there's no Easter Islanders anymore? Um, it, 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 this whole notion of, 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 of matter needing to be in this form of consciousness, and if it isn't in a form of consciousness, it's somehow lame and broken and insufficient because consciousness is just innately superior somehow. It's somehow a superior way of, 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 of arrangement. And, and it just seems like such a silly notion in the first place that there's certainly no need. We create need. We are the need creators. Sentient organisms create need. There's no other source of need in the universe. There's no other capacity. The universe cannot be deprivated cannot be put in a harm state until you put us in it, until you put something sentient in it. We're the thing that creates the vulnerability. And that's got to be justified by some other, like I said, what, if you're not satisfying any other condition, how can the condition possibly be a positive? You really can't make a, you really can't make a positive move from a non-negative state. In, in a sense, you, you really can't. You can't go up if there's no up. The universe doesn't create any up by itself. It's only until sentience arrives that there's any need to have um, any mobility in any other direction. I mean, you could just go through all the, I mean, you know, the Flintstones never really existed. This, with the, is the universe deprivated because the Flintstones never really existed? There's only seven billion people on planet Earth. Is the is the universe in a horrific pain, or is there a, a, a huge, a huge ache or, or longing or missing, because you know we could theoretically turn all the rest of the substance of the universe into little conscious beings, attempting to eke out their little ego gratification. I mean, it's it's just 
preposterous, this whole notion that people are living by, that this is somehow the right standard. Oh, yeah, $7 billion. Oh, yeah, that's a good number. Yeah, yeah, it's a good number. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's an arbitrary, meaningless number. Uh, you know, if I knock it down to three, all these people who have lived in the seven billion world are going to say, oh, we're just, we're missing three billion people. Well, we're not missing them. You're missing them in your stupid fucking head. <laughs> They're not missed anywhere else, but in your stupid perception. Um, so it's just stupid. There doesn't need to be people. There doesn't need to be another generation of this, this game we're playing. And if the game were free, or anywhere close to free, I'd say, okay, go ahead and play your stupid game. Who cares? But you know it's not. And you, you know, to keep pretending, you know, especially talking from your non-blighted circumstance um, about how glorious it all is, for, it's just, it's just bullshit. You know, you're gonna, you know, human beings are gonna live in in squalor tomorrow. I mean, if you have a college degree now. You know, the next time around, the average human is, doesn't have a college degree. It's one percent. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put a little thing on the website. I think, you know, just doing this the, the game of what the average human is, and how far we are from knowing what real life is, um, and then try to calculate it into this animal world, where consciousness really exists, where the bulk of consciousness is is eking out in existence. Um, that's the real permutation here. When you glorify your life and, and justify all that it's paid for it, I mean, horrible stuff. I mean, slow, suffocating death in an earthquake. These are things experienced by people that, you know, I would have to pay you an awful lot of money to go on that ride. If that ride was at Disney World, the slow, crushing death ride, I'd have to pay you a lot of money to get in that little cart. And you goddamn know it. And so don't quit pretending that this is, uh, you know, something that's so fucking free and so obviously worth the trouble when the only thing that's motivating you is complete bullshit, just perceptual needs, your perceptual desires. They're not even needs. They're, they're not even something that you'll be caused real harm. Um, it's just perceived harm. It's just a hysterical little girl kind of reaction like you broke your fingernail or something your fake fingernail fall off and and you're all hysterical but you gotta go find your fake fingernail I mean it's just a hysterical immature reaction to think that there's something awful horrible if there's human beings on this stupid planet a thousand years from now there's no horror there's no there, there, there is no crushing death um, there's no, there's no loss the only thing lost is your deprivation, your need for there to be something more. That's all we lose. We lose your need. Oh, what a horror. We lost a need. A need that doesn't need to exist. I mean, it's a simple friggin' statement in a sentence, but no one will deal with that sentence. Instead, they just ridicule the entire philosophy or ridicule the person who's uttering it. Um, you know, with this, this mocking, silly rhetoric uh, that has nothing behind it beyond fairy tale. Uh, no, all the fairy tales end with happily ever after. How dare you tell us what to think? And that's the other thing. It's, it's a, it really is the psychology, just like a religion or something. It, they're, they're just going based on their majority status. Well, the rest of us believe it, you silly person. <laughs> you know, um, you know this, there's just no credibility at all to the argument. Um, that because an average human being thinks they're accomplishing something, they must be accomplishing something. Um, Pirro does this too. He, th he makes these imbecilic arguments that, uh, oh, there's no absolute truths. You know, hey, people can believe whatever the fuck they want. Well, then why don't you let people believe that there's no harm in molesting a child if that's what they believe? I mean, who are you to tell them so, right? Because nothing can be stated as a fact. Uh, it's just silly and stupid. Um, you know, you, 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 this idea of, of, of um, the, the truth, that's the other part too, is that people, even in my own videos, when they're sort of agreeing with me, they keep saying things like, oh, there's so much we don't know. There's so much we don't know. <laughs> there's so much we do know. I mean, <laughs> this is just, you're just, you assholes are going to just keep complaining forever. Unless somebody hands you a, a videotape with every single detail of the universe on it, 
you're just going to keep whining that somehow we don't know enough to draw any conclusions. Bullshit. I mean, the evidence is in. We know where we came from. We know what all this shit is about. It's called evolution, and it doesn't have any judgment. It doesn't have any brain. It's not doing anything constructive, but but forcing obliging organisms to to chase uh, um, a, a completely illusionary goal, uh, so it will indirectly, indirectly, satisfy the prime directive, which is yeah, just spread genes, just spread genes, spread genes, spread genes, spread genes. That's the prime directive, and everything else is just a a contrivance to get to manipulate the organisms in that direction and that's the only game here and that's what all your little needs are made out of that's what all your little perceptions of value are made out of you're just chasing your own hunger you're not chasing something real you're chasing a hunger placed inside of you you're the one with the problem okay the hunger doesn't exist in the world or in the universe it only exists in your perception there is no positive value except in your perception. All there is is downside risk to this game, this life, uh, sentient life game anyway. Uh, where else to go with this? But again, this idea that we don't know, we don't know, we know. I, I mean, ask the question and there's a reasonable answer. Um, a specific question. Um, every question we need to answer, we have an answer for a solid, uh, beyond reasonable doubt answer. Uh, so anyway, yeah, it's just very discouraging. I have to keep arguing this stuff. Uh, and again, I'll, I'll reiterate the, uh, another, I think, point that just can't get past this is that if you were, if, if I could extract your hunger, your desire, your addiction from you, if I could take it away, your desperate need for all this bullshit, this, the ego crap, uh, the I need to accomplish crap, the I'm accomplishing something crap, whatever it is, I'm better than I look, or I'm better than I, you know, whatever you're, whatever you're contriving in your head to find rationalizations and excuses for your mediocrity, your glorifications, um, yeah, you'd see no value in it. I mean, it's like taking away your, your passion for a baseball team or something, and all of a sudden, baseball is going to look really stupid. If I take away your attachment to the players, or your attachment to the team colors, or whatever else it is you're rooting for, um, you're not going to see anything of value in it anymore. It's just going to look stupid. It's going to look like a pointless waste of energy. Uh, let's see where else to go with that. That one's a good point, the whole sports analogy thing, because it really does, it, it does have a lot of connection to what people are doing, and, and you can sort of see that this, this is just about this stupid competitive crap. It's about picking a, a, an underdog, or picking the, a, a value matrix thing, you know, something that you care about, and um, just rooting for it. And so you people have decided to root for nature because you have a little bit of a, you know, I hate humans, so I love nature kind of attitude, or I hate science, therefore I love nature. Whatever the thing that's going on in your head that gives you an affection for these little parasites and monsters living out here. Um, this reverence for it as a system, even. Um, a system that will brutalize beauty will be as rude as rude can be to beauty in an instant um, and you'll, yet you'll just glorify it say it's yeah it knows what it's doing it's and, and, and so anybody who's attacking that that thing that Gaia monster of yours that pet Gaia yeah it's like your pet pit bull it's a, that's probably a good example too you know people will they have these pets and they get an attachment to them and then they'll, they'll come up with, they'll contrive all kinds of bullshit to defend what is basically a, 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 a dog with the brain of a dinosaur. Um, it's just stupid. It's stupid. It's idiotic. It's moronic. And then these people will sit there and point their finger and mock somebody else. I mean, what a joke. Well, anyway, enough said. 
but it's just this whole context thing. I just don't, I guess you people just never ask the question soon enough in your life or never, or never had the, the thought, what if that was me? What if that was me? What if that was me? I mean, that happened for me really early, you know, because I was doing the little anthill thing when I was a little kid. And I would identify with an ant, and I'd say, well, what if that ant was, what if I was that little ant? And so I would start to think about its life and what was happening to it, what it was doing. And um, it just seemed very natural for me to start doing that, to start saying, well, what if I was that thing? Or what if I was that thing? Or what if I was that thing? Um, and then all of a sudden, the world, <laughs> yeah, gets a little, little more brutal. Uh, a lot more brutal and it's harder to find rationality in any of it uh, sensibility in any of it the good die young I mean we can give a hundred little trite phrases but I mean yeah I mean there's just no value to this torturing people while they die why should my grandfather die of leukemia for ten years what the hell is that about I, I mean I was young you know ten years old and I'm somebody I just had such an affection for and he's just being killed right before my eyes slowly a little piece at a time being pulled off of him uh, how the fuck do you people make sense out of that how the fuck do you people say that's yeah, okay you know that most valuable thing in the world picked to pieces yeah so what it happens no big deal yeah move on you know to the next cheese sandwich it's all worth it. Just, I had a cheese sandwich yesterday. It was just so good, a cheese sandwich. Uh, anyway. Yeah, uh, sorry. You people fail. <laughs> yeah.